Good morning. It's Velvet Dawn, take two over on Wisdom Weaver. I am here with uh, Marie Cavalli. She is joining us from Cape Town, South Africa. And I am just sharing the Wisdom Weaver today on this Wednesday about our trip to Egypt and what it all entailed. So I'm going to wait for her to hop over here. And once I see her watching, then I'm going to add her on here. And um, we, and here she is. Yay. Okay. That was the most intense five minutes of my life. More okay. So than Egypt. <laughs> I just, can you turn up your volume? Off my volume. Hang on a second. How do I do that? On Let me take side of your device. With my okay. earphones. Is that better? It might be because I'm on earphones. Yeah, because I can't hear you. I'm glad you're on here. I'm glad we got to connect. Is it too early for wine? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Right? I can't. Oh, I just need to hear you. You just need to turn it up a little bit. Hang on a second. And now, no. Oh, my goodness. It I don't know why my laptop's not working. It's not working. Do you have your earbuds in? I did. Let me do that. Let me go back with the earbuds. I took my note too. Okay. Maybe. Okay. You're frozen now. Okay. You're back. <laughs> you Can might, you hear me I now? I have to take your earbuds out. Maybe. I'm not sure. Oh. Hilarious. Okay. It's good. We're good. I can hear you good. well. We're good. I'm, good. I'm really good with pyramids. Just like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, no. Hi. Good morning. Good, good evening to you. Exactly. Good morning. Good yes. <laughs> thank you. So thank you for joining me here over on Wisdom Weaver. And oh, God. thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited. I even brushed my hair for this. My hair, I usually look like a in a bush, but I even brushed my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it looks perfect. You look beautiful. Beautiful. So <laughs> let's begin. Why don't you tell everybody where you're from, a little bit about yourself, and introduce okay. yourself. Okay, so my name is Marie Coveley. Hi, y'all. I'm so excited to meet Velva's community, which I know is quite expansive and huge. So hey, everyone. I am currently, let's start where I am right now and backtrack. When people ask me where I'm from, it's like a multitude of places. So I'm actually living in Cape Town right now. I um, also live in Zimbabwe. I've been in Africa for about 22 years, originally from the UK, not far from Avalon, just down the road from that is where I was born. And, um, and then I'm also from the stars, which we've asked where we've all met before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. No, thank you for sharing that with everybody. I know there'll be a lot of people on here who've been wanting to know more about you. So my first question. So I'm going to just say that the way that Marie and I met is I just most recently went on her tablets of light tour um, over to Egypt and we just recently returned and you know people had said to me you know how was the trip and I said it was more than I ever could have imagined it was magical it was um, informative it was there was laughter there I, I call it the emerge the spiritual amazing race right yeah. where it was you know you, you were good to go in three, four hours of sleep because you were so excited yeah. to see what the next day would bring, right? Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. Yeah, it was a bit, it's a bit crazy. This is the thing, when I say to people like, look, there's so many different ways you can tour Egypt, which we all know about. There's lots of spiritual tours out there. Some of them are called retreats, but this is not a retreat. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this far is, from a retreat. It, it's in the disclaimer. It's like, yes. you know, it's kind of like, you need to know how to like, you know, run a light. You say just light, a very little sleep. <laughs> but you know what? That's where, the, that's where the magic happens. That's where the magic happens. You know, you know when, I mean, essentially you get broken down without being like, you know, like sound, yeah. making it sound completely brutal. I mean, like, but you, energetically you just get broken down so you can tap into that light. So, yeah. you know, there's a method in the madness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is a method in the madness. And I totally agree. I'm just straightening myself out here. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little crooked. All right. <laughs> so my question to you, the first question is, and if any of you have questions and you're watching, you know, put them in the comments and we will answer them yeah. as we move through the feed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so beginning, what drew you to travel to Egypt in the first place? Well, it was actually more like Egypt dropped in for me 
Egypt found me before I found Egypt, if that makes any sense. You know, I've mm -hmm. kind of been on my spiritual path for, a, for, path for a long time. You know the deal, you kind of went to your Reiki workshops and you were doing it kind of like within your, your, your four corners of your life. And then all of a sudden I was like, man, I want to travel. Now I wanted to go kind of like to retreats and have a little bit more of an exciting experience, you know, not knowing that I was a Greek keeper or the rest of it. I just knew that I wanted to get the hell out of Dodge and just expand and do something really exciting. So I ended up in Ibiza of all places, not to party. 20 years, well, 30 years ago might have well been the case, but this was actually for a spiritual <laughs> retreat. So I went there and um, the lady was holding an Egypt retreat and, um, or, or, or yeah, or an expedition. And I ended up going and I really didn't have much love for Egypt at that time. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it just kind of like found me. Um, and then once I got to Egypt that time, well, I mean, it didn't really like expand and happen straight away for me. Basically, the biggest gift that Egypt gave to me at that first retreat that I went on was a huge dollop of inadequacy. And I have never felt so small in all my life. And I spent mm. the whole, like the whole tour in Egypt just being so super small. I was, because it was 40 of us, there's 40 people, 40 spiritual egos. Wow. And you, I think you either, you either expand and become a bit kind of like in your ego when you're in that kind of dynamic or you go super small because there were so many people that I think we were all coming from a place of fear of wanting to be good enough. We're in Egypt and it was like a clash of all of these energies. And I do think to hide your fear, you either go large as life or you just go super small. So I was that mm -hmm. tiny little snail in her little shell. And that's how, that's how I, I, I basically rolled through that whole tour. So it wasn't an instant love affair, but I kind of got back to Cape Town and I was like, that can't be my story. I can't mm -hmm. be going to somewhere because I mean, I, 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 I never not complete on anything. And I was like, that can't be my story. That wasn't a happy ending. So then I went back for round two and that wasn't much happier either, but it was a process. And then I think by about trip three, I was like, okay, I think, I think there might be some kind of love affair blooming now, but it was, it was more <laughs> like Egypt exploded inside of me in the shadow. So I certainly didn't, I did, certainly didn't land there through, you know, through, through um, like, you know, just kind of like, oh, let's go there, joy and love and light. It was quite the opposite, you know, mm -hmm. and then it kind of like turned into something completely different. And for those of you that have worked with plant medicine, ayahuasca, I've worked with ayahuasca extensively and I work with the plant medicines as well. But I want to talk about ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is kind of like, for those of you who've done it, it's very intense. You kind of like, it's the worst ride ever. And you're like, I'm never doing that again. And then a week later, you're like, oh, let's do it again. There's so much enlightenment, you know? And that's mm -hmm. kind of how Egypt was for me. It was my great awakening. And yeah, that was, that was, and, and now like the love and the connection that I have to the land now, but it, it was a process. It was a massive journey. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank you for sharing that because I think sometimes people will go and, and travel somewhere and it's not what they think. And then they project that, you know, that was the land, but in turn, it was just, you know, sometimes you have to make that relationship just like you would with a human being. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Because this, mm -hmm. this is the thing, look, you know, I, and I'm not kind of like saying that any other uh, methods of holding uh, uh, retreat spaces or, or ex sacred expeditions, as I call them, is right, wrong or indifferent. It's just where you are at, at your journey mm -hmm. and where, how, how much are you prepared to look at your own stuff? How much? Because it's your movie. Like you say, oh, my God, that person really triggered me when I was on the tour. And you're like, yeah, she's or he's this, that and the other. And actually, it's Egypt working her finest going, look at this, look at this. So the bottom line is, are you prepared to look at it? And if you are, it will be a bit stingy sore and then you'll get to the good stuff. But if you're not, then sorry, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you'll probably have to come back again. But that's the thing. Everything is a mirror. But the way I hold space and kind of we, because that's why we connected so well, you and mm -hmm. I, because mm -hmm. we do hold the space in the same way. We hold mm -hmm. the space, but we allow you to kind of figure it out on your own. That's yep. the key. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And that's the empowerment stuff. And that's what, that's what I do in Egypt. I hold the space for you to mm -hmm. see what you need to see and move through it as, 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 um, as quick as possible to get to the good stuff. But mm -hmm. you're doing the work. And at the end of the day, it's just a question of, are you, are, you know, it's shadow work. It's shadow work. You can't bypass the shadow, but in all mm -hmm. the shadow is the light. So mm -hmm. you can't, you can't avoid it, you know? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I love what you said too, about holding space. That is my philosophy and teaching too, is that, you know, a true teacher will teach you to look within yourself. You're still there holding space yeah. if they have a question or need help, but directing yeah. it back to them. And I see Juliana's on here, one of my students, and she has always said, you know, that's the best part in the teaching 
is looking back within yourself, right? That's what a yeah. good teacher will do is yeah. put you back on your feet and say, go find it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And quite frankly, half the time they do want to punch us in the throat, but that's part of the job. <laughs> Almost every time, right? <laughs> I know. I've become desensitized mm. to it. Now it's just love vibes. It's just like, well, we're mothers, aren't we? But we all have mm -hmm. that capacity to hold as mothers and fathers, if there's any guys on here. And it's actually just mm -hmm. recognizing that, that, that deep en energy, Gaia mother love, as well as like, if you've got kids, whatever, we have the capacity to hold that space. All of us do. So mm -hmm. it's a case of like, just bringing everybody up to speed. So we're all at that one same, same level. That's what mm -hmm. it's about, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Good morning, Juliana. I saw you were on here. Okay. So before we do the rest, let's talk a little bit about the shadow work because it's so important right mm -hmm. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you want to just share a little bit about, about the shadow work and what's happening right now? Okay. So the shadow work right now is up front and center. Basically you do not pass go unless you can't look at your dark mm -hmm. and nasties. Do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like the bottom line is if you keep avoiding washing your pants and socks and the dirty trousers and this, that, and the other, eventually you're going to run out of clothes. And that's like, then what? You gotta go and still wash clothes. Do you know what I mean? You just yeah. rather do it as you go along and be clean all the time. That's yeah. the way I look at it, you know? Yeah. And do you know what? It's not easy. But it's like I was actually thinking about this today. You know, we have all of these activists and people like fighting like against the governments and fighting for what's right and wrong out there. But imagine this, if each and every one of us took a moment to just do our inner work and actually sort of like heal that inside, get rid of our anger, which sends us out to the streets, burning our bra or kind of like holding signs. <laughs> maybe if each and every one of us basically did that inner work and then the next person did and the next person did, we wouldn't need to do those, mm. those, those marches mm. and that anger and everything wouldn't be out there. So it's really about taking responsibility. And mm. I think where we are right now, I believe that we are on our final um, soul retrieval, meaning there's that one last part, which is always the hardest part to bring back home. Now mm -hmm. there's a huge resistance to that because it's the most stingiest part you've got to bring back. That's different for everyone. And I think that there has been so many people that have got super sick lately. I mean, we were in Egypt, so we were like kind of like coasting in a different dimension. Probably if we were in our homestead, we probably would have got sick as well because the energy has just been so high. But what we were, I came back home and all of my spiritual community, they're all very unwell. And it's like that purging is the shadow stuff. So there's two things going on here, being able to consciously face your shadow in this critical timeline, because we're about to like be fully remembered. And then there's also like, you know, the element of having that sickness on board, because sometimes Jesus has got to take the wheel and there's certain stuff you can't get to. So that's why you're sick and that's why you're purging. So you just allow, 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 just be there for it the whole way. But this is the thing, people, there's a big part of the spiritual community that want to live the spiritual life, but they are refusing to do that shadow work. And it's not easy. I get it. It's not easy. Man, no. we've spoken about this. You, incredibly shadow work, me, <laughs> mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. like it's hard. Yes. But we have to get rid of this, excuse my French, bullshit mentality mm -hmm. that everything's mm -hmm. love and light, y'all. There is only the light. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's not. The no. spiritual path is snot and tears. It's hard. Most of the time you want to go back home to the stars and it's like how it is, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be like that forever. So mm -hmm. we've got to take responsibility for our part in the weaving, right? Yes. And we all take, take care of that. And if we do that, then we come by our, mm -hmm. come by our <laughs> <laughs> eventually we end up there around the fire, but yes. you know, Anna, and thank you for sharing that so authentically because you're right. And it's hard, right? And people even think, oh, I was over there, you know, sightseeing, which I was, but underneath it, there's such deep work happening, right? And I'm like, I need a holiday from my, you know, Egypt trip, right? And that's, that's what all my, my traveling is. It's all work, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. and it, there's the good parts, but sometimes, you know, it is work. So, yeah. okay, now let's get this is one of my favorite questions. Okay. Go on. So this, oh, I know. Okay. So who has been your most prominent Egyptian goddess and God? Ooh, that's a big one, isn't it? You know, because I always say on all my videos, do oh, I'm talking about Hathor. She's my favorite goddess. And then the next day I'm like, I'm talking about another. Oh, they're my favorite <laughs> goddess. I'm actually a bit of a turncoat, but I would say the most prominent, uh, well, Basically, let me just say it this way, my self-discovery of my most prominent frequency, where most of my superpowers sit, the mm. original essence of who I am, 
Sekhmet man. Mm -hmm. Sekhmet is just like, as mm -hmm. you know, because you've been on fire since you've been like on fire in many different ways. On fire and on fire, <laughs> you know. Yes. She's mm -hmm. like, you know, she's in each and every one of us, and she and she she basically uh was the one kind of who spoke in my ear when i went to egypt uh second trip um i'd already been there once and i was with this group of about 15 not 40 which is wonderful we went to see sekhmet but all the all the tours that i've attended we all get crammed into that sanctuary you know her sacred mm. sanctuary and it's a bun fight mm. and i can actually and i remember feeling that she was really pissed off but it was just like this this solid black statue and i'm thinking am i imagining this this is in the days of my inadequacy that I didn't think i could channel and i who below me so i'm like squashed up against the wall because i let everybody have their moment with sekhmet because mm. everybody was reaching for her and I'd already seen her once. So I just humbly tucked in against the wall. So essentially, I was really quite close to her because she was behind a barrier. Then I started to hear this voice and she was like, you're going to bring tours here. And I was like, sorry, what? And I was like, no. And it was my own voice speaking back to me. And I'm like, is this a channel? And she said to me, I now realize it was her. She was like, you're going to bring tours here, but it's going to be very different to what you see here. And I started to have a conversation with her. And I was just like, well, first of all, hell, absolutely not. No, I'm like way too small for that. I'm not doing that. And I said, but just out of interest, what, but what does that look like? She said, that's for you to go away and find out. So anyway, mm -hmm. I remember leaving there and never, never left me. And then I went there again. And each year I went back and saw her. I progressed a little bit more. And then all of a sudden her frequency started to get really strong in me. And I started to understand my, my superpowers and kind of understanding what my personality traits, which are actually gifts, you know, being able to be bubbly and loud and in your face and let's do this. Also, don't mess with me, kind of fire when we need it. Do you know what I mean? All mm -hmm. of that stuff. And I started to recognize myself as a space holder because she was gently working through me. And now mm. she's like, if anybody says, who's your mother? Sorry, mom, my flesh mom. But like, it's not, it's not you. It's Sekhmet. Mm -hmm. Sekhmet's my real mom. Do you know what I mean? Of who I really am. And I think I could probably say my own mother is very much on that, on that, on that line, you know? Um, so I would say Sekhmet has been a very integral factor and will continue to be throughout my lives that's who, who has affected me the most. Now, as far as the gods go, I mean, gosh, I mean, like, who, this is like an Oscar speech, isn't it? I right? remember to thank God. <laughs> Sorry. I must remember to thank God. Um, <laughs> so I would say, I would say, look, I have to say Toth. So look, Anubis mm. is a close second, and then you yep. get to Osiris and all the rest of it. But Toth, he was, I saw I had Sekhmet and I had Toth and he was like, you know, build it and they will come. And that was the sacred architecture. That's where the name tablets of light came from. And he was like, you are a teacher. I thought I was a healer for years until he got involved and he's like, no, hun, you're a teacher. Just a small little mm -hmm. realization, like he dropped in with me, being a teacher and a healer, very, very different. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I really stepped into my role and he helped me build, he helped me build things. You know, he, he's, he's, I'm also a researcher and I think many of us here, mm. gosh, we can mm. go down rabbit holes. I'll get a download. Then I'll be like, oh, <laughs> let me research that. And then before, you mm -hmm. know, four days later, I'm surrounded yes. by books, like a mad professor. <laughs> and I'm like, this is amazing. And that I think is the toast in all of us. Yeah. So I would definitely say toast and Sekhmet winner. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And can you share with the people that don't know what the gifts of Sekhmet and Toth are? Okay. So toast is always here, here he is, up here. Um, and Sekhmet's over there, so I can't show you, but Toth, um, do you know what's so beautiful is about these, These. Um, this is how I share them, okay? So a lot of people could go really textbook with this stuff, but that just keeps you limited. First and foremost, mm -hmm. we must understand that we are every single stream and cons consciousness of every single golden goddess going. The only reason they vibrate around us is to show us, hey, I'm in you. You have a Toth aspect inside of you. You have a Sekhmet aspect inside of you. Otherwise, we are forever, doing praise be to God's praising, working with them in separation. And we're never really realizing ourselves that we are oneness wisdom. So we're mm -hmm. all in that, right? Mm -hmm. So now, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the question was, what is a quality or oh, yes. a quality in each that people could use them to connect with? Right, because I tend to go off on a tangent here. So you've got to keep <laughs> That's <me grounded>. okay. <laughs> That's okay. I got you. <laughs> Ten tabs are open. Um, so yeah, so with Toad, I mean, like, it really is for me um, helping people activate their Toad frequency so they can get practical. It's no good getting stuck in the, because uh, I did a video once and somebody was like correcting me on the fact that, I mean, he has been like several incarnations and I'm not into that. I, look, I understand that. And that's really cool, Toad, that you came back here a few times and that's a really badass kind of 
vibe you've got going on there. But I want to know how I can embody the energy of you and bring that out, uh, out mm -hmm. through my own filter and actually emanate my toes frequency in building, I don't know, a school for starseed children at all. Or this, that, and the other, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that is what the truth of it is all about. So Toth is like about wisdom. He is a teacher. He is about symbology. He is, a, he is the moon. I mean, he is like what I call the Google of the universe, right? And I liken him a lot to Merlin because he's one of those mad mm -hmm. professor kind of like, you know, gods. Yep. And he basically helps you activate sacred architecture, bring it online. I mean, for goodness sake, he built Egypt. So I think he's pretty good at the whole brickwork thing. Yes. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and mm -hmm. then, of course, Sekhmet, moving on to her. Now, she's like major shadow mother. Okay. She is known as the dark mother. Most people fear her tremendously. Most Egyptians, when they were taught, remember Walid shared the story, mm -hmm. his grandmother mother would mm -hmm. say, if you don't eat your cookies, Sekhmet's going to come and get you. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yes. she used to inflict like, you know, um, all sorts of um, like pain and suffering on people if you didn't do the right thing. But when you work with Sekhmet, she's an alchemist. She's a dark mother. She's going to take you through your shadow and she's going to show you how to activate your fires, how to harness them so they mm -hmm. don't maim, kill, hurt, destroy and bring them into, um, into a way that you can work with her fires to transform courage into fear, to transform any lower end vibrations into the highest vibrations. Mm -hmm. But being in Africa, I have grown up around wild lions. I mean, get, don't get it twisted. They aren't running through from my garden or anything like that. When I lived in Zimbabwe, still do, we go away for the weekend and there's lots of wild lions there, observing them in the wild, looking at the female lion. When they roar, they are proclaiming their power to the sun because mm -hmm. she is, Sekhmet is a, is a daughter of Ra. Mm -hmm. So when you actually observe the actual animal herself, the Sekhmet and the lion in real form, you start to understand the qualities that Sekhmet has and you backtrack it to yourself. So lions are strength, they're power. Um, and I think every single one of us needs to activate that, that power within us because mm -hmm. she's courage. Mm -hmm. She's courage. And we all need that. Otherwise, we just stay in our cave. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I love that analogy of staying in your cave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because you do yeah. yeah yeah and the and the fire like holy smokes like i i have i have done a lot of work with the goddess and and the gods and i have never felt fire like i have with sekhmet coming yeah. home from egypt like it's yeah it's hot yeah yeah it is it is. Mm -hmm. it is. And she, yeah, she's, you know what, when you meet the Sekhmet, as you know, because you've met her in the, her, her sacred sanctuary and everything like that, you've got to be humble, man. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, if you're not humble and you're taking for yourself, she'll also give you an ass kicking for that as well, because like, you know, that's what she does. And she teaches you approach with humbleness. Mm -hmm. And I think in this, in this world, we need to be humble. Um, mm -hmm. I don't care how many gods you can channel. I don't care, like, you know, what you've achieved in your life. At the end of the day, we all have that capacity. We need to be humble. Yeah. And if we keep it humble, um, egos don't take over, you know? Because yeah. when egos yeah. take over, that's when the fire gets out of control. Yeah. And we've got to just keep it in check, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No, that's, that's good. Thank you for sharing that information. Okay. <clears throat> now, the next one. What has been your most positive experience in Egypt? One that really sticks out for you, that was monumental. Um, I think as a whole, like as, as one big, look, uh, this last trip that we did was like seriously, seriously significant. And that's probably a whole nother podcast right there that we need to talk about the Sacred Seven, because that's what we were. <laughs> we were like yes. Sacred Seven, right? Yes. Um, but I mean, so the work we did on this particular tour as all the tours are, they're not just like taking groups of people to Egypt. The people that hear the calling dictate what the mission is and I hold space for that. So that's why it's deeply sacred. And the one that we went on was literally on another level. In all the times I've been to Egypt, and I'm not just saying that I have never experienced what we have experienced mm. in the, the, the community that we had, the, the, sister, the sisterhood and the brotherhood, you know. Um, but for me, I would say the most magical experience after having three very, very brutal brutal um awakenings from egypt one two and three when i went when i really said okay if i'm gonna hold tours like what am i gonna do i wanted to go to the land on my own and ask permission can i you know what i mean mm -hmm. i felt that was the right thing to do so uh, my best friend my brother walid who is the other part of this creative mm -hmm. experience um who's our brother as well now, mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he was like come out with brendan my husband so we went out and locked down so we literally had every single temple 
the Great Pyramid. Nobody was there. Nobody was there because Egyptians don't get out of bed until late morning. Good to know. And then when it's in COVID, you just got to go at 7 a.m. So I actually did this, my own sacred pilgrimage through each and every temple. And it was my birthday. Mm. And I said to uh, Walid, I don't want to know what temple I'm in. Just let me know nearer the time. My birthday was February the 11th. And he said, we're actually in Temple Isis. And mm. it was like, that was on my birthday on new moon, go figure, nearing mm. the end of our tour. So we, this is a private tour just for myself. So when I ended up at Isis, I mean, I even speak now and I can feel the emotion. You've seen that sunrise. I mean, like I, I just sat there and she just said, you have just got blessings. You just bring your people. Sorry, I get so emotional. Mm -hmm. bring, your pe bring your people home. You know, mm -hmm. you, you've been um, you've been blessed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have safe passage here. And then since then, it's just been it's just been like on another level, like the beings that I've met, like yourself. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. soul sisters, man, it's just like, mm -hmm. wow, does it get any better than this? So so that that trip was significant. I will never forget it. And that's where the name Tablets of Light dropped in. And Toth was just like, think mm -hmm. this is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I just followed the breadcrumbs, questioned everything, doubted everything, because I'm, 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 like, I'm like into that. I like a lot of resistance and a lot of doubt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> but I still, I still mm -hmm. followed the breadcrumbs, you know what I mean? I still did it, you know? So yeah, you did. that was the most profound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you know, thank you for sharing that. I was the first, I, I'm like, I came on, take two. And um, I said in the first video that I deleted was, that was mine too, was, <clears throat> you know, the full moon going on the, the waters were like glass on the Nile and then getting there in the dark and watching that sunrise was epic. Right. I know. Yeah. It's just, it, it's between you and the sun. It's between you and Ra, you, you know, and, and that's why like, there's nothing to say when we're there. There's nothing to say. Like I say, I think for me, my role, don't get involved in people's business. Do you know what I mean? Just stand mm. back and say, sun's rising. Look at that. Do you know what I mean? And then we all yeah. have our own thing. And surrounded by a million cats. Like, yes. Cat, oh, being a cat lover, obviously. You know what I mean? I was like, this is heaven. You know, but it was very powerful, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we did the, the Isis temple in darkness. I mean, like that, that has been unheard of. Even though I was losing my mind going, we need light. And meanwhile, Isis was like, just shut up and get the job done, which I did. Right. <laughs> you know? That was, yeah. no, that was, was incredible. That was pretty sacred. I mean, I have to say what you had said, there was just every day it would be like, well, we can't top this day because it was so amazing. And then the next day would top it. Yeah. And it continued yeah. until we yeah. closed the trip. And yeah, uh, mm. yeah. And, and just the dancing that we did, you know what I mean? Like, I am such a clown. I mean, like anybody that knows me for these few minutes being on here, this is it. Yeah. This is it. Now you know me. And I've got to do everything in humor. I've spent my life being told yeah. you're too much, you're too you're not serious. And I mean, let me tell you, I take everything extremely seriously. But mm -hmm. I'm like, love is it sits right next door to laughter. And it's the most most quickest way to open your heart center. So I rejected that part of myself for a long time. So peeps mm -hmm. out there, when you get told you're too much, you're this, that, and the other, don't tell them to stand in the shade, period. So I'm like, well, I've got my own version of doing things. And for years and years, attending other shaman ceremonies and things like that, and just not fitting in, going, I want to do it the way I want to do it. But is it okay? Never felt that it was okay. And then, of course, like um, Egypt gave me the, the platform. And then when we got to the, when we did the first tour, we went into the, um, into the, uh, the area that I was drumming. And then everybody just started, somebody had a didgeridoo. We had a didgeridoo. I was drumming. Somebody else was like dancing and like singing and chanting. Somebody had a rattle and it just turned into a full on like jamming session. Yeah. And, mm. and then somebody was on the other side blowing hape, which is like the sacred shamanic snuff. And as I look back at the temple, it looked like it was alive again. Like it hadn't been in years because everybody that goes to uh, Egypt does the same thing. Let's go to the Isis, Holy of Holies, do this, and then you can walk around and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, like that's, that's kind of boring and standard for me. Like, you know, like we need to bring life back. Now, one mm -hmm. of those guys that attended that, that, um, uh, that, that tour with me, he went on an ayahuasca in the jungle because he carried on traveling and, and Isis came to him and said, thank you for bringing laughter and dance. Mm -hmm back to my temple because everybody's just got stuck that oh we need to be deeply respectful and she was like there's nothing wrong with it dancing and having fun i mean we danced to like uh, you know was it what like an egyptian and even yes the guards were filming yes yes we were like why not we were that was <laughs> so, so was epic 
Mm. I know. I loved it. (laughs) So much fun. Yeah. So much fun, you know, but we do the work. We do the, we do the real serious stuff, um, which can get kind of like quite heavy and that's the balance, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And why can't you just uh, like walk in laughter as well? There's nothing wrong with it, you know? Nothing, nothing. And Mm -hmm. I think you're right. It's like, I too was told, you know, sometimes I'm too much. I think too deeply, right? Yeah. You think too deeply, Dawn. Like you're, you're, too, you're too much. Like you're, you have too much emotion. You have too much of this. And I'm like, you know yeah. what? Just yeah. let, let yourself be who you are. Yeah. Yeah. People say, yeah. slow down. You talk too much. And it's just like, I remember one teacher years ago saying to me, well, why didn't they catch up? And I was like, now there's a concept. <laughs> Why don't they catch up? Do you know what I mean? So I've just ramped it up since then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a mission. Yeah. Exactly. A good mission. A good mission. Uh, okay. So leading into that, the next question is, what is your passion in life? Do you know, I actually, you know, my passion, well, first of all, is people. I mean, I am so mm. passionate about that, but creating creating and like i'm not a one trick pony man i mean i like i think like this is the thing we got to get into all our multi-dimensional layers because like you know not many people know this but it's just like i go to house parties and myself i go to the club because i like to dance you know what i mean nothing wrong with it i i you know i'm not like a, a a vegetarian i like food i eat meat i eat vegetables whatever i just live life right but mm-hmm. i never used to i never used to but i'm just passionate about um I'm just passionate about evolving. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And if you said to me, right, we're going to the jungle tomorrow. I'm like, I'm in. I don't know what I'll tell my husband and my kids, but I'll figure it out. They'll be fine with it. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's live in the moment. Let's have a slumber party. Let's just talk and let's just vibe, you know? And and, Mm -hmm. and I'm just like, um, I think I'm just passionate about living. But for a lot of my life, especially on the spiritual path, it's only been in the last 12 months I've decided to live. (laughs) <laughs> because I've been wow. dying ever such a lot. I mean, it used to be five times a day I'd die. <laughs> you know right. I mean? Because because you're in this dark night of the soul and it just got like that. It got heavy, hey? It just like, I was like, I don't know yeah. whether I can do this. And then very recently, like I say, the past 12 months, I was like, no, I'm going to live. This is, mm-hmm. this is, I'm here now. This is where the party's at. And I'm going to join as many people that want to join this party. So I would say that's my passion, the mm. party. <laughs> you know? Love Let's it. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's live, you know? Yeah. You know, my hashtag is YOLO, right? You only live once. And that's how I live. Exactly like you're saying. It's like laughter, be spontaneous. Then you know your heart chakra is open when you're spontaneous, right? Yeah. yeah, Like Exactly. mm -hmm. Exactly. Play, play, play. Mm -hmm. Because I think we can get so serious on the spiritual path. And this is not a judgment because, man, I can get a little bit intense with this. You know, sometimes I don't move out of this round office. And I'm just like, because I'm creating, I get lost in myself. And then like, you know, I get invited out and I'm like, to the real world? What do they do out there? Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. so it is a balance. It is a balance. And, you know, you can very easily kind of like slip into that, that, that humdrum, you know, but it is, it, it's like, you've got, you've got to live life. You've got to be spontaneous. And now I've embraced that. I'm finding more people that have an even wicked a sense of humor than I have, meaning you and Erica <laughs> and all yes. of the above. Even the last tour I did, we just, they said, no, people like my stomach muscles hurt because we just, oh. you know, we just laughed so much. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah, you've, you've got to, you've got to be in joy. You've got to enjoy and you've got to be in joy mm-hmm. and let that, let that, those sparkles mm-hmm. go. Let them mm-hmm. just shine, man. More people will come, you know? So, yep. yeah. I agree. I know I was, I was laughing, telling somebody that people were calling us the girls, Erica and I, because we're sitting in the back of the bus laughing constantly right and then you would chime in and understand what we were laughing about and we were all laughing right because my my stomach muscles did hurt like I haven't laughed that hard in such a long time and it was just so much fun so thank you well, for that remember when mm. we were in the Hathor temple and we had to climb up where there was that one chamber yes. right? we had to climb up that yes it was so small mm-hmm. got to tell the story yes. guys because it was hysterical yes so I, I was being all serious like we're on a timeline we've got to get this done because I can't be serious we've got to get this done we've only got so much time in here and we've got to move on to the next one so anyway we climb into this tiny chamber and it was only enough for us all to fit on there and we had those bats that were hanging above mm-hmm. my head so of course the three. bats were behind me three ba- three bats and the giggles the fits of the giggles the video you sent me we were just nobody was listening to anybody <laughs> oh. and then these bats came down and swooped over my head you guys all ducked and I was like what what's going on 
And then I was like, no, come on, guys, we need to get focused. And then I couldn't stop laughing. Then I got a fit of the giggles. I could not stop laughing. And I was like, well, this is done. Yeah. <laughs> this is done. <laughs> but that's what was needed, clearly, just to, mm -hmm. like, lighten that space <laughs> up, bring some joy to it. Because it was a little bit dark, that chamber. Yeah, you know, I think it was. Out. It was a little bit dark. It was. Just a it bit. was. <laughs> yeah. I, and I didn't even know I had recorded that. And then I watched it later because I heard, I was like, whoa, because the bat came down. And then you could hear us laughing and you're, and then you lost it too. It was, it was so good. <laughs> it was. Laughter is the best medicine. It yeah. is. Okay. Now the next question, which I, I love, I often ask this on Wisdom Weaver because I feel like it's good for the younger listeners. Yeah. So what advice would you give to your 20 year old self now? Wow. Okay. That's a question. Now let mm -hmm. me tell you, I'm going to share with the group now. I've got no problem with that. When I was 20 years old, I was coming out of drug addiction. So I was like a star mm -hmm. seed that was so lost 10 years of drug addiction and um, nervous breakdowns and whatnot. And like 20, 21 years old, I was still in the thick of it just very soon to come out of it. And back then, if I can tap into that, past self and really what was going on I only found I thought that I found my family because I was creating an artificial artificial connection of like one love with these drugs and everything like that and of course those those connections only last for that long until they get super dark and then you get plunged into your into your inner depths which is what actually happened I understand that now but if I could like but knowing where it came from mm -hmm. such nervousness and worry and fear about where I fit in about like how I fit in and you know just just being rejected all the time and just feeling so lonely and just you know just worrying about everything I remember my father saying to me once he said you know you will worry about not having anything to worry about that's how much I mean my whole life has been backed by fear and people see this and they go right you go to Egypt let me tell you something fear is a very powerful presence and you can let it destroy you and like take you out and completely annihilate you or you can have a very strong self-awareness of it and say well fear is always untapped power Fear is the thing that's going to drive you gently towards courage if you choose it and then you transmute it and then you've gone and done something amazing like going to Egypt or something like that, you know, but that kind of comes with wisdom. But I believe the young people nowadays have already got this wisdom on board because that's why they're the next generation. That's why I went into drug addiction, essentially, so I could put all this into the grid and just change, you know, do what we have to do, you know, and I understand that now. But I think for my 20 year old self, it was like the amount of worry I had and I maybe wasted so much time giving a shit. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's like, and, and I remember having one of my, I think it was St. Germain. He just kept coming and saying, careless, 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 careless. And I thought, careless, what are you talking about? Care less, mm -hmm. care less, mm -hmm. live, which is what we've all spoken about. You know what I mean? And I think that um, we are here for a very, 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 very exponentially powerful lifetime. So if you are a young person like now, and you're that 20 year old now, or even like Ava, my daughter, 16 years old, and, and your daughters mm. and everything, mm. like they, they, they got it covered, man. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's just like, do you boo and just get it popping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's like probably not the most spiritual tagline, but that's, that's <laughs> like, I maybe Jesus used it. Maybe somewhere there'll be in some scripture somewhere, I think. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Yeah. Jesus said, get it popping. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yo. Yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo. Peace out. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's, it's just, it's just all that worry. And because I mean, you look at Instagram and things like that now and you look at um, our kids and everything and there is such a comparison. And I actually did, I was actually sat yesterday and I did one of the, some of these points and it was like, even for us adults as well, you are becoming, so you're trawling through Instagram and Facebook to see how to become. And I watched a video yesterday. I have to share this because this is no judgment, just insight, right? There was a married couple sat and they were meditating and they were looking out the window. So someone was filming them, right? So they had like a child here and the other child was sat on their lap and she had her eyes closed, three years old, meditating. And they had the music going. You could see this woman was holding her child down because he wanted to go off and play. And she's like, no, we're being still. It was all just a set up way mm -hmm. of being, right? Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and I thought, there's a problem. 
because that child is actually going, Ma, will you get off me? I want to go into the garden and eat worms and live my life. Do you know what I mean? I want to be sat here looking like I'm a peaceful child. Let me go. And then the little kid is sat there going, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but dad said he's going to give me a sucker after this. I'll get a lollipop, so let me just do this. And it's like, now, meanwhile, we're all trying to fit into that program. So it slows you down. So imagine like that's us as adults. Imagine youngsters now looking at the skinny bodies and all of this distortion and you're yeah. trying to fit into something which isn't even true. So you are trying to fit into illusion. So where do we go mm -hmm. with that? This is why I love what you do. And I love that you share these, these groups and we can talk really candid and just put it out there because I'm about to put some stuff out now, which is just cool stuff out, you know, cool people out on their stuff mm -hmm. say, what are you doing? Keep it real. I want to see you like, you know, like in your pajamas still. You haven't washed and just do a quick video. Let me mm -hmm. know what's spiritually going on for you. That's real. Mm -hmm. So we got to keep it real, man. And like, mm -hmm. you know, for our children, you know, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo. <laughs> right. I know. You know, I couldn't agree with you more. And that you're right. There's so much, there's templates, right? When you look at yeah. social media and you can, you and I don't fit into those templates, right? Yeah. So it's like, that's why we are yeah. where we are because you got to blaze yeah. a trail yeah. that nobody else has blazed before, right? Yeah. 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 And this is why I shared with you the other day, mm -hmm. like I just landed, you know, I've gone through the houses with this because there's probably lots of conscious creators on your groups and everything like that. People yes. that are like ready to share their body of work. I've been through the houses with this. I've gone that route, do my marketing, lost thousands and thousands of US dollars of trying to get my message out. And it was just, it didn't work. And it was because I was thinking that social media was going to save me. Some marketing expert is going to save me. And the bottom line is it comes from authenticity. It mm -hmm. comes from you letting out your creation power and actually being gifted a platform which is reels Instagram which is Facebook th this kind of dynamic and just having somewhere where your your creativity can flow and land then leave it alone carry on doing something else but don't go back and think well this is this is like what do people think because then you're stepping into the level of inauthenticity because mm -hmm. now you put it out there for an agenda mm -hmm. to get more likes because you think that your work's going to get out that way now I've been through the houses yeah. I've done all that so I'm not judging it I've done it and now it's a case of like, I just keep it real and I just do my chats and I just do my talks. And I think everybody is ready to see the unedited version, the realness of what you've got to say. And each and every one of us has such powerful encodements. And I really want to stress this like odd because everybody thinks that they've just got a little thing going on. No, there's a unique soul design in, front, in, in you. And whatever mm -hmm. you've got going on and however that transcends into the world is really cool. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to add to what we're doing. So it's like, you are valuable, you are important. Just be creative with it, but don't think that social media is gonna be the vessel because it's not, it's, it's, it's a filter. It's mm -hmm. a platform of which there's many to share your light with in the world. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we, we are the vessel, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Don't give your power away. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I love that message. That's so, so don't try and fit in to what everybody else is doing to get the likes or to get the follows. You got to be yourself authentically a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And, and Mel Kizadek, nope, you. you spoke about this. Mel Kizadek came through and he was just like, this was a good couple of years ago now. And he just said, you know, even the, the even spirit, even the humanity, spiritual humanity, like our, our community in the world, it needs to be cleaned up because we have to all be upgraded. Even myself, mm -hmm. they're like, called me on my own stuff. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I've got to upgrade that. But there's a lot of people that are not willing to, which means they stay in that level of inauthenticity mm -hmm. and they keep their students or whoever's following them at that level. We all have to be like super, super authentic. And it's, it's just, it's just what has to be done. So it's like, you know, let go or be dragged, put it that way. Do you know what I mean? Get well, it, totally. And the other thing that I always say all the time is I'm always a student. I'm always learning, yes. right? I, yes. I, I never, because I'll, I will have students come into my class sometimes and they'll say, well, I've taken this, 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 and this, and this. And I just sit there and I smile. And I, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. because that's what I enjoyed about your trip is I loved how you held it. I love <laughs> everything you. you put together. Oh, it was, it was meticulous. And it was, Oh, it was just, like I said, it was more than I, I thought. And oh, it was you. such a, a gift to me to be in your space and watching it all play out, but watching how you dealt with it. But what you had lined up, like starting at this temple and going to the Isis temple and the days, like it, it yeah. was just, it was magical. So thank you for no, putting... Thank 
Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh God, you make my energy itch in a good way. My crown shack mm -hmm. is tweaking when I talk to you. <laughs> to Egypt. But no, thank you because this is this is what I live for. You want to know, like you know, you said about what's your passion? This where it mm -hmm. lands. It's not hierarchy. It's mm -hmm. a reunion. Yes. Sister, sister, brother, mm -hmm. brother. It's just a, it's it's a Batman sign in the sky and it's a meeting place. And then we all mm -hmm. get busy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With what we said we were going to do. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's the mission. And that's, you know, when I, this is the, uh, the book that we all received, right? That Marie puts together. It's phenomenal, the work that goes into this. Thank and you. I remember I got it and I sat there and I just like, this woman speaks my language. And, <laughs> you know, and so it's just been such a pleasure to have met you and to be on this. So thank you. Keep, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Okay. So we have um, a few more minutes and I feel like this is a really, probably the most important question of all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What advice would you give to the listeners right now? Oh, big energy rush that came in there. Right. Mm -hmm. The time is now. Yeah. The time is now. There is no messing around. It is, you have a support team up there, here, you have those that have walked that path and know how hard it is to get your stuff out there. You don't have to do it because we've done it. We now you now have your you have your star family, which are people like Velvet, people like me. You know that's why we walked those front lines. So now it's like we did it for a reason. One of the reasons to hold space for our other people to to get up to speed. It is essential if not imperative, to now start unpacking your encodements because they are, it is ordained for it to come through at this lifetime. Nothing bad is gonna to happen to you because you've protected those encodements until now. That's why you're feeling the stirring and maybe some uncomfortability to a certain level, but the mm -hmm. time is now and it's like, like you're needed. So where you go from here is literally the great awakening. If there's any resistance to that, that's when you're gonna get sick. That's when you're gonna feel unwell. So rather just let it all go, step in, step forward with your light stop like i was given a message the other day i always receive messages but i believe it's for all of us because we are one and i was told the other day you're hiding and i was like don't know what you're talking about i didn't realize that i was hiding behind everything and then it was either Ye yahweh or yeshua that came through and they said who are you to dim my light through you that is not your business mm. so i say the same thing you are a conduit you are a vessel this is this is this is what you are acknowledge it you're pure light mm -hmm. pure love and now is the time now is the time and let's do this let's do this it's about mm -hmm. fun and play now yes ashley mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yes <laughs> should i bang my drum should i bang my drum it's right here <laughs> you, you should <laughs> you should <laughs> it's actually all wrapped up i can't <laughs> okay <Sorry>. okay <laughs> okay so <laughs> excuse me I want you to share with everybody what do you do in your community so the people that are watching can go how can they connect with you what can what do you do just okay. let's feed them okay. that one second because I am because I am going to get my drum now okay give me two seconds okay so be requested okay, okay. One yes right. <laughs> oh it wasn't wrapped up after all that it was just a bag in the front I'm going to bang it at the end I'm going to give you a quick shindig okay but um, what I do in my, my platform, so I've kind of been shifting and shaking just to make it easy for everybody to kind of like, you know, step up and step in. Not everybody has the finances, but some people do, some people don't. So my work is very much on YouTube. So you can find me under my name, Marie Coveley. There's a lot of meditations and always uh, video blogs, just like, you know, unpacking this stuff. Also as well, my link is in bio on my Instagram. Again, you'll find me under Marie Coveley. And in there is my circle community, which I'm just starting actually to today, um, live Q&A group. Again, no cost. So there's no excuse as to why you can't get your back up off the wall and get in the center of the dance floor because it's time, right? And that's actually going to add on more and more and more because I'm going to do like select groups where I'm going to pick seven people to work with at a very, very, very minimal price. And then you'll be good to go to go and invest in Velvet stuff or Egypt or whatever. Do you know what I mean? There is no excuse. So it's time to mm -hmm. actually do that. So mm -hmm. that, that's my community. Instagram, YouTube and my circle community, which is the link in bio. So you mm -hmm. can find, find me there. So thank you for allowing me to share that. So shall I give a little a tinkle yes. on the drum? Yes, please. 
Okay, so this is, I don't know how it's gonna sound though, but we'll see. This was the drum of Egypt. It is a synthetic drum, but nonetheless, it's the one that opens portals. So in mm -hmm. celebration, in celebration, activation and acknowledgement that we are all here to open our encodements now. It is a commitment, it is a, it is a promise, and we have declared it in the name of Isis. Mm. Uh -huh. That's wow. drums into the grid work now. I don't know whether you heard that very well, if it transcended over microphone, but just so you know, I've planted that in the grid work now, so you all have to do it. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Erica just said, hi, ladies. Oh, hi, Erica. <laughs> no, that was beautiful. I um, thank you for doing that. So I just want to, I'm just going to do a little wrap up here. Um, I want to thank you all for joining. I, I just want to, I really wanted to share Marie with all of you. Um, just because, you know, the, the moment that I actually met her and I sat in circle and listened to her, I'm like, this is a lady that I've known for lifetimes and she's a soul sister. And I look forward to what is coming, you know, with us and, um, moving forward, working together and doing things, um, to lift the vibration for the world. And, she has a lot to offer, so be sure to go and check her out. Check her out on YouTube, check her out on Circle, check her out on Instagram. She's got free things, and then she's got things, even for my students that are listening, she's got things that I don't teach. So, you know, it's going to be different, and, it's, and she's amazing. So thank, um, you. Thank, thank you. Now, when is your next trip to Egypt? So my next trip to Egypt is on May the 9th, 2024. Our mm -hmm. bookings are already open. People have already started booking. Um, I think like we're going to have quite a big tour. So worry not because I think there might be two tours back to back because I'm going to keep my groups not too big. You know what I mean? They're, I like to have the personal interaction and everything. Um, and the, the tour details, when you go onto the link in bio, you can actually see where the tour details are and everything like mm -hmm. that. It's easily, you know, easily accessible. And you can see what we'll be doing. Now, there may be a couple of changes. It all depends on the frequency of what gets channeled in. Because every time I take a group to Egypt, the mission is different. Mm -hmm. The mission that you and I did, Velva, was very specific. Mm -hmm. And then some. So mm -hmm. I now know I can already feel the energy of the next tour is actually slightly different again. And that all boils down to you guys. Whoever has that soul calling is who comes. And it's never a bums on seats thing or being, being like, you know, sort of like sell it out because that you'll know. And let me just say it like this. If you're kind of like tweaking out now, then you'll, you'll know. That is like, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to get to Egypt. Or if mm -hmm. it's just a bit of a, meh, it might be in a couple of years time. But when you are meant to be there and it is ordained, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting that feeling, get in touch. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she's right. As soon as Erica said, I'm going to Egypt. Do you want to come? I said, yes. I knew that I was going and, and it was just a yes. Uh, it was a hell yes. Not just a, yeah, it was <laughs> hell. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. And, yeah. um, so I just can't go. The medicine is incredible and it will shift your life. And Marie is an incredible, um, tour facilitator and there's just so many gifts. So definitely Thank join you. in. Yeah. You're Thank welcome. You so much. Yeah, You're yeah, welcome. Yeah, this is awesome. I think I might move to Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we could do half time and half time, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so in. I told you, live, man, live. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah. no, thank you so much. And uh, your website? Yes, my website. Again, um, www.mariecovely.com sacred missions and expeditions i just thought it'd keep it keep it simple don't forget this name yes <laughs> very simple and yeah. on there i mean you, i mean i do an offering as well called the heca codes the heca codes is basically heca means magic and medicine and that is like i, I work with activating the alchemical formula formula within you which has been mm -hmm. resting dormant or forgotten and it brings on that heca magic and medicine um, manifestation power of the egyptians like it's really potent so it's a formula that you used to work with all the time, it goes back to the hermetic teachings of Toth and all the rest of it, you know, and all the gods and goddesses get weaved into that. 
So that's your sweet spot. You only go into the Hecker Codes, which are three sessions. They are actually like a mini mentorship. I don't like usually calling it a mentorship because it makes it sound like quite clinical, but that's the best way to describe it. And you get your own meditations, which are like channeled and downloaded. I kind of put them together for you to work with as a whole experience. But the bottom line is, is when you go to Tablets of Light Tour, it's structured in a certain way. It's my own type of mystery school, but it's based on Hecker. So we go through session one, which is Sia, the god of vision and, and perception. Session two is the god of hue, which is like speaking your idea into being. And the third session is Heka, which is magic and medicine. Kaboom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that means it's just everything gets activated. So once you know that formula in your whole being, you can't unknow it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not teaching you anything new. Your trade, your blueprint is, is your blueprint. I unlock that. That's over to you, empowered, remember. But the mm -hmm. template of alchemy is what you will always work with. So I just bring that online. And of course, when we go to the Tablets of Light Tour, it's, it's Hecker on steroids, basically. So yeah, so those are my two <laughs> offerings, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful and powerful. And exactly what would be helpful right now and right here so that yeah. we can begin Pushing living. That's yeah, right. Get on that next level. Mm -hmm. 100 percent, yeah yeah excellent well thank you okay. so much this has been lovely thank you yes thank you i think we've all enjoyed it and i look forward to connecting with you soon as thank you to everybody who's watching and yes, i will be live you. again yes okay thank Thanks, you guys See bye you everybody bye